Module 3. The Occult Hand of Visual Perception Reading is not innate. It arose only a few thousand years ago and relies on brain circuits used to find small objects or recognize faces. This module discusses the functions involved in visual perception. For beginning readers, these mechanisms have significant effects. Difficulties in seeing the letters or distinguishing among them reduce opportunities to learn. But we can facilitate the problems and thus make instruction more efficient. Cost, time, and the number of illiterate students can be reduced. By the end of this module, you will be able to explain how the brain identifies letters, which visual variables influence early grade reading, and how to make instruction more efficient. The writing systems across all cultures rely on the same brain circuitry. In every case, a substantial amount of information must be packed in such a way that the readers get maximal semantic and sound cues through minimal orthographic units. Writing systems did not evolve arbitrarily, but were gradually optimized in ways that fit the human cognitive system. During teaching, learners' brains become trained to take up and extract from print an optimal amount of information. We are used to thinking of reading as inextricably bound with language. And indeed, expert reading involves language rather than letters. However, reading starts with vision. It is a neurological activity that at its earliest stages perceives letters on the basis of specific parameters and then links them to sounds. Only then is the output directed to language parts of the brain. Two channels control reading, a where channel that controls movement, attention, connections to the motor system, and a what channel that controls perception. Both ultimately lead to language areas. This is a schematic of the brain where the many reading areas are marked. Before making sense of text, letters must be attended to, located, and identified as shapes. To see something, we must first pay attention to it. Images initially enter a sensory register that can keep them for two to three seconds. The image passes into the optical part of the brain that contains receptors, specialized cells that detect individual features, lines of different angles, or curvatures. The receptors need to see shapes they can recognize. To read, our brain uses circuits that specialize in perceiving faces or small objects. Students need a lot of practice to be able to identify letters and their features. Beginners may not recognize calligraphic forms as deviations of standard forms. This comes with practice. Through multiple trials with letters and fonts, we build prototypes in our heads and get a sense of acceptable deviations. New letters are instantly recognized if the shared features are many, but if they are few, we may be unsure. In that case, context helps. As you see in the picture, an A really consists of special features. These must be processed rigorously and independently. Identification must be very fast, or the information in the sensory register will be lost. We read best with our central vision. In the periphery, the letters look crowded and unclear. Expert readers read four to five letters in the center of their vision, but beginning readers get only one or two letters. Long words without spaces slow down the reading rate, and in the beginning, letters must have space between them. Which fonts should grade one textbooks use? Andika font has fewer features than the calligraphic font. The calligraphic letters do not have standard shapes and also seem crowded. Until people become expert readers, it may help to use shapes with fewer features that may go faster through the shape recognition process. Thus, it would be good to use sans serif rather than calligraphic fonts in the Roman script. In this example, we see alternative ways of writing K that share certain features. Some deviations from the prototype are tolerated in letter identification, but only to a point. Beginners may not recognize calligraphic forms as deviations of standard forms. This comes with practice. 
This is why it is most efficient to use standard and simple forms of letters until students become fluent readers. As previously mentioned, letters are recognized through their features. More complex letters take longer to recognize. So alphabets and type styles with more and more complex shapes take longer to learn, despite their simple spelling rules. In fact, efficiency is inversely proportional to parametric complexity, perimeter squared over ink area, and nearly independent of everything else. Here, for example, are some East Asian characters derived from Indian scripts. Our brains prefer a certain separation among objects, and that preference also includes letters. When letters are dense, reading slows down. With practice, people get habituated to dense and small letters, so an experienced reader easily reads tiny and dense script. However, lack of practice delays habituation. Therefore, texts easily read by the middle-class children may be too dense for the poor who get few books. Colors and complex graphics may further slow down reading for beginners. As the world became more literate in the 20th century, people got habituated, so letter size and spacing decreased. Based on what you have learned so far, which of the two books will help beginners read faster? Also note the look and say method of the 2010 book. Given your experience in Module 2, would adults easily remember word shapes from pictures? This example compares Turkish in the Arabic script from the Ottoman Empire to contemporary Urdu from Pakistan. Old books may more closely approximate the size and spacing optimal for the brain. If you wanted to learn how to read the Arabic script, which book would you prefer to use? Research with Italian dyslexics demonstrates the importance of spacing. Spacier letters make reading speed increase up to a point and then decrease. Italian dyslexic students could read a bit faster and twice as accurately when the text was spaced as above. Compare the density with a grade 1 textbook from Niger. For beginner readers, letters should be large and spaced. Letter size and spacing for faster reading could be around 24-point font, double-spaced, three spaces between words, two spaces between lines, and two to three points extra spacing between letters. Reading requires the ability to focus on relevant information, maintain selective attention, and persist despite difficulties. This is called executive function, the ability to self-regulate. This ability develops a lot in ages 3 to 6. Children who are poor are often neurologically immature and may have trouble maintaining attention to pertinent information or persisting. Low-income children with delays in executive function may specifically have trouble focusing on specific letters that are on a blackboard. Children memorize easily, so they may repeat what is written on the blackboard, but without looking at the correct letters. And teachers may not check whether everyone has learned letters. Repetition during instruction may give observers the impression that children are taught through rote memorization. Teachers should direct attention on the new letter, show the letter, and pronounce the associated sound without using any other words. Textbooks could have a letter big enough for children to touch. Children could also come close to the blackboard when new letters are introduced and touch the right letter when asked. Observe this practice in the Gambia. In conclusion, to speed up perceptual learning for beginner readers, clearly link letter sound and shape. Teachers should be advised to write big letters on the board. In the textbook, letters should be large and spaced. 
fonts with just the indispensable features could be used. Calligraphy, often used in Africa, could wait until after automaticity is attained. Children could be asked to point to letters in hopes of focusing on them, on the book as well as towards the blackboard. Now consider some additional perception problems found in low-income schools. Can the students see what the teacher thinks they can? If not, opportunity to learn is reduced. Imagine you are a learner in this class. Could you discriminate the letters of the blackboard from this distance? Often the teachers write using their own visual perspective. If you are a learner in this adult literacy class of Zambia, can you read what is written? Imagine that you would have to learn the hiragana characters from this blackboard in Mozambique. Would you be successful? Likely not, since all the scratches on the board inhibit letter detection. This whiteboard in Cambodia is of low quality and is scratched. Can students distinguish what is being written apart from the scratches? Imagine you are seated at the back of this class. Can you focus on the right letters from a distance? Distance also creates social loafing, a psychological phenomenon that may reduce attention and students' opportunity to learn. Now watch this short video from Cambodia and observe the children in the back of the classroom. Mm. For a few minutes. That is good. It's, but because then the kids will get upset faster. Look at the students right now. Mm. And very often the group size type in distance. Imagine that you had to share textbooks. Would you have the chance to look at the text as long as needed? In this picture from Haiti, the student in the middle has a better view in the center of vision, as well as having a monopoly on how the book is used. In principle, textbooks could be superseded by digital devices. Information technology is very promising in basic literacy, and trials are underway by several NGOs. One example is the Finnish Grafo game, and another one is Moto Lee, adapted to Khmer. Zambian students playing 12 to 20 sessions of the Grafo game in one month showed much improvement. Software logs made it possible, furthermore, to identify the confusing letters and processes that students use to distinguish letters. Nevertheless, sustainability in low-income countries is a problem. Software logs made it possible furthermore to identify the confusing letters. Nevertheless, sustainability in low-income countries is a problem. Visual perception precedes linguistic interpretation. The eyes of expert readers often fail to see perceptual problems. Also, visual perception issues are often of limited relevance to the well-to-do students who have many books and many chances to become habituated. However, the issues described in this module constitute prime obstacles for those who lack opportunities. Textbooks and materials should benefit from the available research.